Welcome to ions and the octet rule. In this video we're going to be looking at what ions are, uh, why atoms become ions, and how we can represent charge with element symbol notation. I want to start by mentioning one of the general themes we're going to continue to see as we move through the year, and that is that all matter wants to be in the most stable state or the most stable configuration as possible. Only a few elements have a naturally very high stability, uh, and those are the noble gases. Those are our group eight elements. Uh, noble gases, uh, they're helium, neon, argon, uh, so on and so forth, all those group eight elements. Uh, but the question is why? Why are these particular elements uh, so stable naturally? And the reason for it is because they have a full valence shell. They have the maximum number of valence electrons. Remember that means that they have the full S and P sublevels. We know that S and P sublevels combined can have a maximum of eight electrons. So that means that having eight valence electrons is a very stable condition. And we're going to see that atoms want to get to having eight valence electrons. They want a noble gas configuration to be stable. And that leads us to something called the octet rule. The octet rule states that atoms will either gain or lose electrons to have a full valence shell or to have eight valence electrons. That's where octet comes from, eight. So let's look at how they can do that. I mean, gaining electrons makes sense. We want to gain electrons until we have eight valence electrons. But how is losing electrons a strategy for having eight valence electrons? Well, let's take a look at two examples. Here we have two atoms, sodium and oxygen. And we're going to take a look at how they obey the octet rule to see uh, what really happens and what's really going on. Now, I have their configurations written already. Uh, noble gas configuration. Sodium is neon's configuration and a 3s1. Oxygen is helium's configuration, 2s2, 2p4. So the goal for each of these atoms is to get to eight valence electrons. Now sodium has two options. I could either add in the 3s, the second 3s electron, and then six 3p electrons, or I could just lose that, which is what sodium actually does it loses this 1,3s electron and therefore it automatically has a neon's configuration, a noble gas configuration. And that makes it happy, that makes it stable. So if that happens to sodium, we say that it becomes a sodium one plus ion. I just left out the one because if you just write a plus, that means the same thing as plus one. But why a plus one? Well, if I lose a negative electron, I get a positive charge. So this is a positive ion a positively charged ion. An, an ion is an atom that has a charge. Okay? It doesn't have an equal number of protons and electrons. And we call positive ions cations. In order for sodium to fulfill this octet rule, uh, it needs to get it needs to lose an electron, become a positive ion, and therefore it'll have a 2s2 2p6 uh, valence configuration that neon has. Now let's look at oxygen. I could do the same thing with oxygen. I could lose all of these electrons, the 2s2 and the 2p4, and I would have helium's configuration. But that's pretty hard to do uh, to remove that many electrons. It's, it's pretty much impossible. So what we have to do instead is oxygen has to gain two. It needs to go from a 2p4 to a 2p6. So oxygen can gain two electrons and that'll put it at a full 2s, 2p uh, valence shell. So it forms an oxygen 2 minus ion. Okay, it has a negative 2 charge. This is the same thing, by the way, as writing oxygen minus 2 like that. Both of these notations tell us that it has a negative 2 charge. So this forms a negative ion. I gained negative electrons. So this forms a negative ion, and we call those anions. So what are we doing here? We're basically showing that atoms can obey the octet rule either by gaining electrons like oxygen did or losing electrons like sodium did. And when they do that, when they change the number of electrons, they gain a charge, either a positive or a negative charge. So let's look at how we can represent that a little bit more explicitly. Here we are with element symbol notation. This is something that we mentioned a few videos ago but we're going to look at what happens now with electrons. So here we have an example. 
Given an atom with 13 protons, 14 neutrons, and 10 electrons, what's the element symbol notation going to be? First of all, I want to look up uh, 13 protons, and I'll find out that 13 protons gives me aluminum. So here we go, I have aluminum written in with the atomic number. Uh, so I've taken care of that piece of information. Next I want to look at the neutrons. That's going to give me some more information about mass. So 14 neutrons and 13 protons gives me a mass number of 27. The last thing I want to look at now, which is sort of what we're adding in new here, is the number of electrons. I only have 10 electrons in this atom. So it's not actually an atom anymore. Technically I should have said an ion with these uh, subatomic particles because an ion is an atom that has a charge. Well, what's the charge on this? Well, to figure out charge, we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna be writing in the charge right here in the top right corner of the element symbol. So let's figure out what that is. Well, charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So in this case, 13 minus 10 is positive three. And that's the charge on this aluminum ion. So in this video, we talked about the octet rule and why atoms gain or lose electrons to form ions. Make sure you write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them in with you to class.